Like so many surfers before him, Jay Moriarty seemed born to ride the waves. But unlike some of his heroes who died doing the sport they loved, Jay was destined for a different, horrifying, watery grave. The crowd watched as the waves marched towards the shore, towering and relentless, their powerful crests a testament to the ocean's untamed might. Surfing atop these raging, merciless mountains of water and wind was a lean, focused surfer, hands outstretched on the surfing board. As the wave broke, Jay Moriarty held on for his dear life as he was momentarily engulfed, a speck against the fury of nature. Onlookers held their breath, their eyes fixed on the spot where he disappeared. Seconds, heavy with anticipation, ticked by until, against all odds, Jay emerged from the chaos, riding out the wave's tail end, victorious against a force that had swallowed more experienced surfers. The crowd erupted into cheers, their relief palpable, as Jay, unscathed, prepared to meet the next wave with the same serene courage. This was where Jay felt most alive, at the edge of the world, dancing on the brink of the abyss. The waves were his second home, and he was born to rule the water. Until one fateful day in 2001, when a shocking disaster that didn't even involve his surfboard would tell a different story. On a day that began like any other, the ocean's embrace would turn from friend to foe. What happened in those terrifying final moments? Join us as we delve into the life and tragic death of Jay Moriarty, a soul whose quest for the ultimate ride took him from the top of the world's most fearsome waves to the serene, unfathomable depths below. From his first awkward tries on a surfboard at the beaches of Santa Cruz, California, Jay Moriarty was set for greatness in the surfing world. Starting at age nine at Sewer Peak, the excitement and passion young Jay felt when riding an ocean wave put him on a path that would shape his entire life. In his short span on Earth, Jay filled his years with the kind of bravery, adventure, and pure surfing spirit that most can only dream about. Those who knew Jay speak in odd tones about his determination and skill on a surfboard. They spoke of his easygoing nature and friendly smile, and they recognized his passion for tackling huge waves, especially at Mavericks, a notorious cold-water surf spot off Pillar Point in Half Moon Bay. Mavericks was known for its fierce conditions, not meant for the timid. The surf break is directly fed by a cold waterfront from Alaska, and this creates mountainous waves. These waves, which could tower up to 30 feet high, have a fearsome reputation. Falling into them is so violent it can strip a surfer's wetsuit right off, turn it inside out, and drown the hapless surfer in the process. Maverick waves had taken lives before, including the world-class surfer Mark Fu, who tragically drowned in December 1994 while trying to conquer them. Yet, for Jay, the allure of conquering these ferocious walls of water spoke to his very core. As a slim teenager, he made up his mind. He was going to ride the Maverick's wave. But he wasn't going to ride it alone. Jay found the perfect mentor to guide his surfing journey, Rick Frosty Hessen, a veteran surfing instructor and a friend of Jay's. Starting at 13, Jay Moriarty teamed up with Rick Frosty Hessen for an intense journey to tackle Mavericks and its monster waves. Frosty, 45, knew the sea like the back of his hand and had a plan to get Jay ready, not just with muscle, but with mind and spirit too. Their training was hardcore. Beyond just surfing, Frosty had Jay hitting the books, writing essays to sharpen his thinking on why he wanted to surf, and even doing math to boost his problem-solving skills. It wasn't just about getting strong, it was about getting smart too. Rick believed understanding waves wasn't enough. Jay needed to think sharp, like solving puzzles to outsmart the ocean. If only Frosty knew that the day would soon come when his protege would not be able to outsmart the ruthless power of nature. But Frosty wanted to build a surfer who could think on his feet while riding a giant wave. The real test was in the water. Jay swam miles in the open sea, pushing his limits further each time. Paddling for hours in Monterey Bay, he got used to the cold, the currents, and the sheer power of the ocean. Frosty made sure of it. He wanted Jay not just to ride the Mavericks, but to know it, inside and out. Rick also drilled Jay on visualizing his rides on Mavericks' giant waves. Rick taught him to see himself riding the waves, to feel the water beneath him, and to master the wave in his mind, 
before ever setting foot on it in real life. The mental game was as tough as the physical, making Jay face his fears and dream big. By 15, Jay was more than ready. The boy who started with shaky steps on a surfboard had become a surfer who could stare down mavericks. He made his entry into the big wave surfing scene, armed with the knowledge, skill, and spirit nurtured by his rigorous preparation. Jay Moriarty's first ride at Mavericks was like a storybook tale, with a giant wave that stretched 15 to 18 feet high. To Jay, it felt as grand as climbing Mount Everest or snagging an Olympic gold. After two years of hard training, catching that wave was a dream come true for him. You can't really explain it, he shared, after that day. You just want to scream out loud. It's the best feeling in the world. But the most unforgettable moment for Jay at Mavericks was still to come. Just eight months later, right before the holiday buzz. On a chilly morning on December 19, 1994, Jay loaded up his mother's pickup with his two big surfboards and headed for Mavericks. When he got there, the vibe was electric, with photographers and other surfers all buzzing about the big waves. The sea was wild, churning out waves like monsters from the deep. Jay, fearless and focused, paddled hard towards one massive wave that stood out from the rest. This was the moment he had been training for. The wind was howling that day, making it tough to stay on the board. Jay knew he had to crouch low to fight through it. As Jay got to the peak of the wave, ready to ride it down, the unexpected happened. A sudden, powerful gust of wind caught him, just as he was about to descend. In an instant, Jay was lifted off the wave, not surfing, but flying through the air, caught in the grip of the wind. Jay's fall was like something out of a movie. He dropped 40 feet straight down, a breathtaking plunge from the sky to the sea. It was a moment of pure adrenaline, a test of Jay's courage against the ocean's might. When he hit the water, it was with a crash that echoed through the air. But Jay, tough and resilient, somehow emerged from the waves unbroken. This wipeout, known as the Iron Cross, because of how Jay's arms spread out during his fall, became legendary. This breathtaking wipeout, captured by photographer Bob Barber, became iconic, gracing the cover of Surfer Magazine's May 1995 issue, showing the world the extreme risks and exhilaration of big wave surfing. Despite the whirlwind of media attention and newfound fame, Jay stayed grounded. He continued to surf with the same passion and dedication he had for the sport since he was a kid. His career was just starting to take off, and Jay had every intention of riding that wave. As the years passed, he became a fast-rising star in the surfing world, well on his way to surfing legend status. But fate had other plans in store for Jay Moriarty. On Friday, June 15, 2001, Moriarty was in Lohifushi, a small island resort off the coast of Maldives in the Indian Ocean, for a photo shoot. Unlike the adrenaline-filled moments at Mavericks, Jay decided to explore the ocean in a different way. He chose free diving, a practice that allowed him to explore the depths with one single breath, training his body and mind for the massive waves he so loved. A lot of surfers have started mixing free diving into their usual water training. By practicing holding their breath for longer periods, surfers are able to expand their lung capacity and handle wipeouts with a lot more calm. Free diving helps surfers get way more comfortable hanging out underwater. By repeatedly plunging down 15 to 30 feet deep into cold water, surfers get used to the feeling of water pressure and learn to keep their cool even when they get held under by raging waves. This allows them to conserve more oxygen and not panic when they really need it. And of course, repeatedly kicking down to the seabed and back up is great exercise for building core strength and confidence in the ocean. Even without flippers, free diving gives surfers strong legs and a rock-solid core, which pays off for maneuvering surfboards. That morning in 2001, with the sun casting a warm glow over the Indian Ocean, Jay set off alone leaving his surfboard behind for a mask and snorkel. The hours passed, and Jay's absence from lunch didn't raise immediate concerns. It was common for athletes like Jay to spend extended periods in the water, especially in such a serene setting. However, as the day faded and Jay missed dinner, worry began to set in. It was unlike him to not communicate his plans or whereabouts, especially in a remote location like Lohifushi. The atmosphere quickly shifted from casual concern urgent alarm. 
As darkness enveloped the island, a search party was organized. Friends, fellow surfers, and resort staff banded together, scouring the coast and the water for any sign of Jay. The search continued into the night, with the stars and the faint moonlight guiding the searchers. The situation grew increasingly dire with each passing hour. Jay, known for his strength, skill, and profound respect for the ocean's power, was nowhere to be found. Finally, in the darkest hours of the night, the search party's worst fears were realized. Jay's body was discovered on the ocean floor, near the area where he was last seen heading out for his dive. The discovery was a devastating blow to everyone involved in the search, and the news quickly rippled through the small island community and beyond. But what had happened? In the surfing community, where Jay Moriarty was a celebrated figure, many had speculated that if he were ever to meet an untimely end, it would be in the dramatic and tumultuous embrace of a surfing wave, like Mark Fu in 1995. Instead, Jay met his final end thousands of miles away from the cold waters of Mavericks, in a scenario vastly different from the high-adrenaline moments he was known for. The exact details behind his demise is unclear, but everything surrounding Jay's death points to shallow water blackout, a phenomenon that can occur in free diving when a diver loses consciousness due to a lack of oxygen to the brain. This condition is treacherously silent. It gives no warning and can strike even the most experienced divers. Divers often push their limits, trying to stay underwater longer or dive deeper, and the risk of blackout increases with each attempt. The body, desperate for oxygen, can suddenly shut down, leaving the diver helpless to save themselves. Shallow water blackout is insidious because it can happen in relatively shallow depths, where one might assume they are safe from the more apparent dangers of deep water diving. Jay had been seen by witnesses diving down a buoy rope to about 30 feet, a depth not typically associated with extreme risk. It was here, in this tranquil underwater world, that he likely found himself in the grip of a blackout, far removed from the crashing waves and the cheering crowds of Mavericks. A free diver like Jay would remain conscious during the dive, but an abrupt change in pressure, oxygen level, or gradual buildup of carbon dioxide would cause him to immediately lose consciousness. This would cause an involuntary breath that sent water rushing into his airways before he could reach the surface and get floats or support. Once blacked out, Jay would now have flooded his airways with water. Underwater, the heart keeps beating faintly for one to two minutes, circulating oxygen-depleted blood to the brain and other vital organs, before ultimately going into cardiac arrest. Even during this brief period before the heart stops, danger builds as the brain is receiving little to no oxygen. Brain injury and damage begin accruing rapidly, Additionally, the airway reflex is compromised, allowing more water to be inhaled to the lungs instead of reflexively blocking it. If the blacked-out freediver remains submerged throughout this, the lack of oxygen inevitably leads to full asphyxiation. The heart stops beating within four to six minutes. CPR has little chance of reviving them if initiated too late after full asphyxiation has already set in, resulting in irreversible brain damage and ultimately death. Due to the risk of blackouts, divers often swim in pairs known as buddies, with the understanding to pull each other out in case of emergency. But Jay was alone. Had he been with a buddy, perhaps his partner would have noticed his extended absence from the surface. Perhaps. We will never know. What we do know is the shock and confusion that devastated the tight-knit Santa Cruz surfing community when the news spread. In a community that rarely saw tragedy, Jay's death was unprecedented. California surfers were stunned. Jay's friends and family couldn't believe what they were hearing and reading. Moriarty died a day before his 23rd birthday. He left behind his wife, Kim Moriarty, his mother, Christy, father, Doug, sister, Daniela, brother, Sean, and five nephews and nieces. Moriarty has an annual paddleboard race in his memory. The Jay Moriarty Paddleboard Race, a.k.a. the Jay Race, is held in Capitola. After his death, a memorial was held for him at Pleasure Point. All of Jay's family, friends, his wife, Kim, and mentor Frosty attended. Since Jay Moriarty passed away, his spirit lives on, inspiring surfers everywhere. His love for surfing and the ocean continues to teach and encourage new surfers. Jay left the world too soon. 
but his story and love for surfing keep inspiring all those who dare to ride the big waves. From trembling teenager to confident surfer, he showed what it means to face the ocean with bravery and joy. In the world of surfing, Jay's name will always remind us to chase our dreams with all our heart, just like he did.